My name is Jacqueline Bolin, and I work with the University of Colorado Denver School of Medicine, and I work in the Dr. Don Gilden's lab, and we study varicella zoster viruses' interaction with human neurons. Varicella zoster virus is actually incredibly important to study because uh, it, primary infection actually begins as varicella, which is chickenpox, um, and it generally occurs in childhood. Um, but after primary infection, the, the virus can actually go latent in any ganglionic neuron along your entire neural axis. If and when you reactivate, there are a number of dermatomes that you can react that can have zoster presentation. And so you can get ophthalmic distribution, which is on your forehead, and that's reactivation from your trigeminal ganglia. You can get on your neck and shoulders, anywhere on your torso. The Norwegians actually gave it a nickname called a belt of roses from hell because it is so incredibly painful. And for some unlucky few, reactivation of that virus can cause further neurologic complications, such as VZV vasculopathy, which can cause stroke. You can get meningitis. You can get post-herpetic neuralgia, which is chronic pain. And in fact, that's the most common neurologic complication. And in fact, if you're at the age of 60 and you reactivate, you have over a 40% chance of developing post-herpetic neuralgia, which can last anywhere from three months to the rest of your life. Furthermore, other VZV neurologic complications can include paralysis, incontinence, ocular disorders such as blindness. And so it's really important that we can really establish this latent in vitro model so that we can really start to study what causes reactivation. What molecules are actually playing a role to make that virus reactivate? And this is what we're trying to recapitulate within our lab. We really want that in an in vitro system. And so using the eye cell neurons has actually given us a tool that we can really start to try and answer the questions of why are neurons so special? Why do they have this propensity not only to survive, but why do ganglionic neurons allow the virus to go latent within them? And if we can really start to answer these questions, we can really unravel the mysteries behind what causes reactivation and really start to work towards prevention. Dr. Don Gilden and Dr. Xiaoliu discovered the, the eye cell neurons and said, hey, you know, this is something that we should really, really think about uh, incorporating into our lab so that we can really move forward with our research. And, and they did the preliminary data and assays and they found, ooh, these neurons, after being infected with VZV, they survive. They're, as best as they can, they're recapitulating what we see in, in, in vivo, where the, the neurons actually are not killed by VZV. They have no phenotypic evidence evidence that you can see with the naked eye that these cells are even infected. And so this really got, got the lab excited about the eye cell neurons and, and really allowed us to start answering the questions of why are the neurons special? Why can they survive VZV infection when no other cell can? And so that was, that was a really good opportunity for us. Cellular Dynamics has definitely made our research not only possible, but you guys have worked with us to really make it the best that it can be at this current point in time. That is something that our lab has definitely commented on several times on how good Cellular Dynamics has been.